from Vietnam right through the, the, the Bay of Pigs before that. That's how long he's been flying. And you say, how, how can he still be doing that? Even though he testified to major committees in Congress uh, about government corruption, you name it. Well, there's a light side of the CIA and the FBI, you name it, left over from when they weren't as bad. And he's protected to a certain extent. And he's given intel. And he's also still allowed to fly weapons. And he told us, see, I don't toot my horn, folks, because that's all I would do, unless I have to tell you we know what we're talking about. I remember he was on, I don't know, three, four months ago, and he broke down all the Benghazi stuff, the emails, the White House knew, where the guns were being sent. Now all those emails have been released. The Justice Department just subpoenaed him, but only to find out what he knows and gag him, and he's freaking out, and they're saying, how did you know that, basically, national security violation, so they're coming after a whistleblower. I mean, what you think I bring Tosh Plumley on? People don't know his name, folks. He's like super famous if you know about intelligence agencies and things. Flying into war zones all over the world. I mean, he's a living fossil. He's been flying weapons since 1957. How many years is that? Flying weapons in black ops all over the world since not... That's 57 years. That's longer than that. The point is, is that I got Skousen coming up. You know what? Skousen will be fine with it. Let's see if we can get Plumley. I said get him on tomorrow. This is too important. See if you can get Plumley on the last 15 minutes or so. Skousen will be all right with that. Because this Benghazi thing is really big. See, I say I want to go to your calls, and my head is just spinning at this point. And see, my brain, why didn't I think get Tosh Plumley on when everything he said turned out to be true? And we've had, like, the biggest Benghazi whistleblower on. And by the way, I'm only alive because of your prayers and that there are good people in government. The criminals in government are afraid to kill us or set me up because they know that people will blow the whistle. I'm too big a target. But I've gotten to the point, and I've been told this, that it doesn't matter. It, it, sometimes you get so big, you got to be dealt with. Well, that's just the way it is then, isn't it? Just like Tosh Plumley said, he loves his grandkids. And he's old enough where he just doesn't care anymore. And he said that he basically delivered, he can't say all of it, troops and weapons, including what he called high-energy weapons, to Al-Qaeda. Now that's all public. And that he talked to the other pilots. I mean, when, we, when we've interviewed him, ladies and gentlemen, he's been on the tarmac leading groups of aircraft and he's like, I told you I got to go. And during the break, all right, I got to go. Rawr! I mean, and they're taking off lines of weapons. I mean, the guy is calling us as this is going on. And they're all totally angry. You saw the troops, including majors and people, showing their ribbons, saying, I will not fight for Al-Qaeda in Syria, Infowars.com. I mean, do you think the military likes it? Do you think the special ops people like going to airfields? And see, the government was so arrogant under Obama they were having the troops act and the mercenaries actually deliver the weapons to Al-Qaeda who would smart off at them and say things like, I'm going to kill you later. Remember they were in uh, Libya, hold up signs saying next Syria and then next Tel Aviv, next New York. We're going to kill you with these weapons. And now it's in the news. They've got heat seeking ground to air missiles. I mean, imagine the troops are having to deliver weapons to Al-Qaeda who are smarting off at them. I mean, I mean, you imagine the disconnect with the Obama people? Because none of these people have ever been in combat. They're just a bunch of lying, oily scum that may know how to run Google algorithms and rig the stock market and rig everything. But it, it, it's like all these politicians go in and go, what's a scanner? What's a, they don't know. Any, they all have butlers, folks, their whole lives, most of them. They don't know anything. They think they can send U.S. Special Forces to train Al-Qaeda in Western Iraq and that the military is not going to flip out and go, Alex Jones is right. It's gotten to the point where Joseph Farah's in here who didn't believe me, you know, 10 years ago about Al-Qaeda and the CIA and they're going, you're right, because it's all out in the open now because the globalists went too far. They think you're stupid.
And I'm not going to go to the airport and sit there and have some idiot being radiated all day want to touch me to make sure I don't have a bomb. Give me a stinking break. I'm innocent until proven guilty. And your terror threat is fake and is a power grab. And I'm not putting up with it anymore. And nobody is. I mean, this is getting so ridiculous. What more are we going to put up with? I'm going to your phone calls. I'm shutting up. I'm going to move quick. I want to get to everybody before Skousen. And, you know, I hear Plumley every time he's on. He starts getting mad and starts going, I'm sick of this. I don't even want to have to even prove all this. He's criminal. Because he's risking his life, folks. That's He's from Texas. And I'm sorry. That's how we act, old-fashioned Texans. We're, we're nice as you can be out if you're out having a, a glass of iced tea with us or we're out playing horseshoes or out riding around or doing whatever. But, man, we got to fight some tyrants. We're sick of it. And I know exactly why he starts getting mad and it just starts because he's got to risk his life because all these other cowards won't stand up. And it's not fun having to do this, but somebody's got to do it. And I'm not going to sit here and watch my country gutted by a bunch of criminals. People say, oh, man, that guy's weird. He gets angry. You're supposed to get mad. I'm sick of it. What is wrong with everybody? We're all in grave danger with criminals running things, ladies and gentlemen. These criminals hate good people's guts. You better figure that out right now. All right, and it's just it's, uh, let's just go to Dirk in Tennessee. Dirk, you're on the air. Go ahead. Skin that smoke wagon, Alex. How you doing, buddy? Pretty good, man. I'm all over the map today, too. Uh, just a couple of things you said, the world's going by at a fast pace right now. It couldn't go by any faster, could it? No, it's all going into warp speed. I mean, we've already forgot about Flight 307. No one even hear about that anymore. Yeah, no one even cares anymore of the government. I mean, people care, but what do you do? They're all a bunch of crooks at the top. They get away with everything. Exactly. But I, one thing I wanted to say, too, is about the um, uh, glyco, glyphosate or what do you call those lines? Glyphosate, yeah, that's in the water supply. They're telling nurserymen here in, in Tennessee that that stuff's not too bad. You can almost drink it. Round, talking about Roundup. They're telling the glycophase aren't, you know, they're, not, they're nothing. Don't worry about them. When I was a kid and that stuff first came out and my dad had me doing the yard, he was a wily guy, but still bought, you know, bought into science, bought into, well, that'll be good. And he's like, no, son, don't worry too much about getting that on your legs or whatever. When he had me out killing weeds, this stuff, you know, they say you can drink it. That is a PR line. Yeah, you can drink it and, and your prostate will turn into a giant cancer and kill you. You can drink it and your your breast will rot off. No kidding. Well, hey, that's all I wanted. Good job today, buddy. We appreciate you. God God bless you. Yeah, it's just incredible. No, no, that's a PR line about Roundup. Glyphosate. What's that movie? Uh, I don't like his politics, but that movie's accurate. Um, where he's a lawyer, George Clooney, and, and it's about Roundup. Where the lawyer finally just can't be evil and be killing everybody with a roundup, so he's he's going to settle the case and admit it's poison, even though they because they have the data of it in the well water, and because he's talking to this girl who's lost her family from it, and he freaks out and starts telling the truth, so they kill him, and that's how it really works, folks. But let me tell you something: they can't get us all. You understand that? They can't kill us all. Let's go ahead and talk to Les in Missouri. Les, you're on the air. Go ahead. Well, good morning. Hey, buddy. Thanks Hi, for holding. Thank you. Um, I've been an industrial electrician. I'm retired now, so I've been around for a few years. And I have built machines in the United States, in, in huge factories, not only Ford, GM, uh, Tyson. You know, I, I've been around, and I've done them all over the United States. And you no sooner get done with them than they say, well, tag them and break them down because we're going to ship them. And I'm like, are you kidding me? And you know where they all went? China. China. And I've got a buddy that works for uh, a large uh, production company that uh, does chickens. And he's been to China for the last year. And now USDA comes out and says, hey, guess what? We can ship chickens to China and they can, you know, remanufacture the chickens and bring them back to the United States. So, you know, why is the American people hell-bent on just being 
you know, slaves. Well, they don't know to read and only buy chicken produced in the U.S. They, they don't have common sense. And we've all grown up in it, so it's, it's been hard for me to move away from stuff made in China, but I've almost completely done it. Uh, almost none of our products are made in China. We can't get a dash cam that isn't made in China. So the InfoWars dash cams are made there. We cannot get it. A bunch of stuff we sell is made in the U.S. or we buy it from indigenous people in Mexico or, or, or other areas uh, and, and pay a lot more because it's all been rigged. Again, China, not the Chinese people, they're being used, has been set up on record. The CFR said this 40 years ago to move everything there. That's the future takeover system. They're going to use sucking the Chinese dry to build the world government and shut down everybody else, just like they're sucking America dry to do the same thing. It's not helping the Chinese to do this. They're worse off.